This podcast is sponsored by our good friends who have become patrons via the Patreon crowdfunding site. If you'd like to join them, helping us produce more podcasts, films, and other shows, please go to patreon.com slash theprehistoryguys to find out more. Hello, I'm Rupert Soskin. And I'm Michael Bott. And welcome to a Prehistory Guys podcast about a new discovery in the very home city of London. Yeah, it's one of those where a rather spurious headline came dancing across <laughs> our timelines. And we seem to be quite astute at spotting these, don't we? Uh, yes, all the more it, it, so it, since they seem to be providing quite a rich source of um, information and uh, interesting discoveries, shall we say. Well, well the, the headline that I found almost made me put my grumpy hat on. <laughs> um, and it was, the, it was the Daily Express who said, journalists have said that London is, uh, no, I've written that, it's that uh, London is 3,000 years older than previously thought. Yeah, well, that sort of headline uh, should um, um, prick your ears up a bit, shouldn't it? Yes. Whoever you are. You, yeah. you found a good one, though, didn't you? Well, I found uh, a, a good one. I mean, even the Independent wasn't far away from that. The Independent mm. said, New Discovery suggests London's story goes back more than 3,000 years longer than previously thought. Yes. OK, but top prize for getting it absolutely all in there must go <laughs> to the Daily Mail, who said... Neolithic dirty dishes dug up in Shoreditch High Street were used by London's earliest East Enders who feasted on goat, beef, lamb and dairy products 5,600 years ago, new carbon dating technique reveals. <laughs> that was just the headline. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's quite impressive if... They had just left out the uh, London's East Enders bit, you know, as if finding something in London actually meant that anything remotely <laughs> resembling a city or anything oh, actually I've, existed. I, I've, no, no, I've, fair enough. I think I'd go there myself if I was writing a headline, you would know, you? for one of our things on YouTube. You? Yes, I would. The, yeah, you see, yeah. That's just dirty. That's but, just dirty. Yes, but he did do the honest thing with the, you know, getting the word Neolithic in there. And, and, he did. And, yeah, he did. getting carbon yeah, dating say, in there. That's not top, yeah. top notch yeah. work, that is. No, f for the Daily Mail, it's almost astonishing. <laughs> uh, yeah. Actually. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Anyway, moving on. Well, that moving headline's on. sort of given the whole game away almost, hasn't it, really? So well, kind of, except that this is all based around uh, a, a new technique for dating mm. that has come from... The, the team is actually headed by uh, Professor Richard Evershed mm. at uh, the University of Bristol's School of Chemistry. And they have pioneered a new technique where they can extract... Uh, lipids, basically, fats, animal fats, so, you know, uh, um, milks, whether it's cow's milk, goat's milk, sheep's milk, you know, or even meat, mm. uh, pr from the pores of uh, the insides of, uh, of pottery vessels. Yeah. So this new technique means that you can take pots from pretty much anywhere and date them to a, a level of accuracy that has just never been possible before it's yeah. um it, it's just really exciting and that but, that really is the story lurking behind these uh, mm. these headlines uh, less of uh, you know uh, the history of london being thrust back uh, 3000 years uh, mm. this is much much more about um, uh, and well, science in archaeology taking yeah. another leap well, forward. Do you know what? Should, should we should we get the, the 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 kind of the local archaeology out the way because yes. it's kind of irrelevant. Yes, um, and that's wrong. It's not irrelevant for the people who are doing this, but it's no. it's the thing is it's it's not broadly applicable. That they've uh, in Shoreditch, it's a site in Shoreditch where they've come across a. Uh, it's not just a midden. I mean, it's basically a big rubbish tip, um, which they estimate could be about 12 metres across. Not a votive but they've pit. Found not a votive well, pit. Not worth... <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, but, they, <laughs> but they've discovered... There were 436 fragments of pottery that they excavated, and they reckon that they um, are 
roughly 24 separate vessels that are okay. smashed up there. Um, and so that's it. it. It's this site in Shoreditch where they have dug this, uh, this stuff up. Uh, mm. So the archaeology there is going to be very exciting. It'd be nice to see what comes out of there, even though it has nothing. Obviously, we're talking as then, if people would London or, yeah, at all. Well, we're talking as if uh, people would know where Shoreditch is. Um, north you know, London, North London, North East London. Um, well, in fact, if we're going to be honest, it's not really even North North London. It is just on the north side of the city of London, which okay. is right in the very heart of London. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, you know it, it's it's well south of places like Walthamstow and Hackney. Yeah. Oh, it's, no. it's, yeah. I thought it was part of Hackney. It's uh, some part of uh, well, the borough Hackney, of Hackney. B- borough of Hackney. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the point is Shoreditch. You know, the earliest mm. parts of London uh, we are told mm. anyway um, were on the Thames. If there was anything mm. existing at all. Uh, in the time we're talking about, back in the Neolithic, uh, we suspect it would have been along the river, and this would have been a completely separate settlement from anything down there on the Thames, because this was on its own uh, river, um, you know, about two, know two kilometres was quite lo- north of the Thames. We know the Thames was quite a lot wider um, back then, but I'd, I would need to check back a lot to see quite how much wider yeah, uh, yeah, it was then. But, yeah, and yeah. we're told that Shoreditch in those days was a bit of a marshy meadow. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yes. But but enough of the locale. What's yeah. important about this is what um, what Richard Evershed and his team. Uh, Richard Evershed, he he was thinking about this as a technique, yeah. uh, you know, over, what, 20 years or something like that? Yeah, but this and is the it, first time it's been used, I think. Is that not yeah. the case? That's why it's well, unusual. Well, he, he, he said that it wasn't until they could, uh, that they installed their own carbon dating unit yeah. that they were actually able to uh, to really do this. Now, yeah. that, you know, you, you just toss that off as if it's a nothing. They've installed their own carbon dating unit. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it, it, can you imagine? It must have been amazing for him to oh, you know, finally you know, twenty years of work and suddenly you know ring ring the <laughs> ring the bells. Well, the the background and the context to this is, of course, um, pottery before carbon fourteen dating. Um, pottery itself was the principal manner of of dating. Um, yeah. There was a whole established uh, uh, taxonomy of pottery types. Um, you know, beaker, groove, um, linear band, ceramic, and my lexicon has run out there because <laughs> there are various <laughs> sorts of beaker and, you know, yeah. various sorts of groove. I uh, even found out a few weeks ago there was Ronald's Way pottery from the Isle of Man. I didn't ever know about that beforehand, no. Anyway, <laughs> it was the typology of pottery that um, was scaled so uh, it was a, a short, you know, could be used as a shorthand or an easier way of uh, approximating uh, dating. And yeah. then when C14 uh, came in, that went out um, the window just a bit because C14, you can't C14 the, uh, do a, a radiocarbon dating of pottery itself. Mm. Um, uh, you depend on organic materials such as bone and uh, charcoal, etc., for that. But yeah. the, the um, but the exciting thing about this is that pottery comes right back centre stage again, being able to extract the lipids, as you say, mm. from the, what's been cooked in it as organic yeah. as organics, and be able to do the radiocarbon dating. Uh, on that, uh, it's yeah. uh, quite uh, quite spectacular, and it's uh, anticipated it'll have quite an effect. Well, it, it's 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 wonderful how you know in in making sure that they really did have this right, they tested stuff from sites all over the place, from Britain yeah. and Europe and Africa. Yeah. Sites that when the dating was known with great clarity, so no question, this is this is the age of this site. Yeah. So they then took, um, you know, bits of uh, of ceramic from these sites, Catalhoyuk, and date um, and dated them. Sorry, what did you say? Catalhoyuk was one of them. Y- yes, they did. Uh, yeah, sweet, some, sweet track. 
in some uh, indeed i think it was yeah. One, yeah yeah um but uh, but dating you know using their techniques to date the pottery and making sure yeah. that they actually yeah, correlated yeah. with what was already known yeah and uh, it is uh, amazing really that, uh, that they've managed to uh, get this into a, a a window of they know they're accurate to a latitude of 138 years Oh, and yeah. over, uh, you know, over a period of like five and a half thousand years, that's uh, just fantastic. Well, calling it to be able to date to within a lifetime. Yeah. Yeah, the span of a lifetime. So I think it's a bit beyond us to go into the actual science, but uh, words like nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy and mass spectros <laughs> yeah. spectrometry. Yeah, you can go there. Uh, well, I'm just saying the words. <laughs> oh, that's about it. <laughs> We're involved yeah. um, because mm. the, the 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 facts have to be uh, isolated and make sure that they're mm. they're the right basis upon which to do the the dating. That's the key thing. It's not yeah. extracting fats per se, but getting the right fats. If I'm understanding mm. this correctly, anyway. So a lot of work has gone into it. Um, well, it's it's interesting, isn't it, that uh, you know that you look at the um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it, it's a marriage of techniques, isn't it? Yeah. Because to be able to establish that you're looking at fats from cow's milk, sheep's milk, goat's milk, that means that all sorts of other tests, isotopic tests, and uh, you know, and put, uh, you know, even potentially DNA. Uh, mm. uh, have been carried out yeah. uh, as well. So it it is yet another example of the romping forwards of uh, scientific technology within yeah. archaeology. It's just, I love I, it. I, I just love it. I, I'm just wondering how many apple carts may be uh, uh, upset, <laughs> you know, whenever you get something new, a new perspective <laughs> yeah. on things. Uh, some, yeah. Something usually gets... <laughs> Yes, <laughs> or somebody yes. might get up and <laughs> gets upset. How many how many petulant feet will be stamped? <laughs> I do wonder. <laughs> and I think yeah. we've come to the limits of our um, ability to speak coherent uh, um, words. About I, I this. think I think so, but it 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 also needs to be just put out there. Of you think what those potentials are when you if you can apply a technique like this to sites that are already, uh, you know, well known, but yeah. the sites that are most ancient. So, I mean, Catalhoyuk is the, you know, you yeah, mentioned yeah. Catalhoyuk, but uh, some of the tells in the Middle East that we, know, we you know, we know oh. go back many, many, many thousands of years. You know, what will we be able to, what will we be able to uh, discern from I, that? Do you know what, I, I bet you if, if it can be done and it's not too expensive, um, to go back, you know, to go back to um, stuff that's already been excavated or uh, analysed, and that is, it could have a profound impact on the chronology of, say, the transition. You know, uh, farmers coming over and displacing uh, yeah. hunter gatherers uh, in mm. this country and coming across the Channel and up the Irish Sea and all that and establishing. You know, what was the sequence of uh, yes. establishment of farming in this country from the yeah. Neolithic over to the Neolithic? If we're going to use those terms, <laughs> yes, indeed, yeah. indeed, indeed, because it, 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 you you get the, the other aspects of that. That if you've got people travelling, depending on where they find any of these artifacts, that if you know if you're travelling with food, well, cheese is a good food to travel with, isn't mm. it? It's Fair got dudes. some legs. So if you could show from isotopic and DNA analysis that the cheese or the lipids inside this pot, so you find a pot in southern Britain and you find that actually that cheese has been uh, in somebody's sweaty pocket for, you know, wherever it came from. It may be Polish cheese in southern Britain. Who knows? <laughs> who, knows what, who knows what might turn up? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Uh -oh. These questions and more will be answered. <laughs> Probably not by us, though. 
No, almost certainly. No, no. Not until we get this carbon-14 dating unit set up in my studio. <laughs> no, that's true. Yeah. And on that go. bombshell, I think it's yes. uh, time for us to uh, thank you once more for, for listening and mm. uh, hope you enjoyed that little update. I hope that brings a little bit of clarity to uh, London being 3,000 years older than was previously thought as well. Mm-hmm. All right, till the next time. Thanks for listening, folks. Cheers, folks. Bye-bye. Hello, Michael Bart here. Thank you for watching this Prehistory Guys show. There's loads more to watch, and you can get some of it on this playlist here. If you'd like to receive updates about when we publish new content, hit the subscribe button, and you can unlock even more content by becoming a Patreon supporter. Hit this button here to find out more about that. See you soon.